I don't have to introduce you, but I'm going to. Two-time PBR world champion, J.B. Mooney. Let's play speed round. I want you, you got a minute, go through all the injuries you've had in your career. Oh, that's a lot. Uh, broken ribs, broken jaw, broken leg, broken ankle, uh, blew out both knees, the right shoulder, uh, left elbows all tore up, plate in my left hand. Uh, list goes on and on, multiple tears. You got everything. some time, keep going. <laughs> uh, uh, Last ready liver, uh, collapsed lung. Um, I don't know, I can't think of them. I, quite a few concussions, I'd say. <laughs> that's maybe why you can't think of them. <laughs> yeah, that's why I can't remember most of them. I was asleep for most of them. <laughs> Those of us that see you week in and week out, we watch you walk into the arena and hopefully watch you walk out of the arena. You don't walk like a 30-year-old. You walk a little bit older than that, let's say. Do you do you know your body's getting getting this wear and tear on it? Oh yeah, I know. My dad told me a long time ago. He warned me when I was little. He said, "Boy, all you're doing is tearing your tearing your body completely up." And you know, he said, but that's when he told me, you know, you play the game, you take the pain, you get up and walk out every time if you can. So I know what I'm doing, and a lot of people ask me, "You crazy? You going back? You going to ride again?" I say, "Yeah, I'm going to ride again." What happens when you get old and you can't? get out of bed. I said, I guess I'll lay there and think about all the good times I had. Uh, okay, I'm going to call you out on that for a second. You watch other sports. Let's use football as an example. Guys that play great in the NFL literally cannot walk a decade later. I mean, do you allow yourself to go there? Oh, I, I know what's coming. I just don't think about it. You know, I, I'm 30 years old and I got the swagger of a 60-year-old man, so I know, you know, time catches everybody and when you don't take care of injuries and you don't have the surgeries to fix them and things like that, it's going to be worse on me when I get older. But, you know, I've always said that bull riding's a short career. I mean, you're not in this for 20 years or 30 years. It's 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 here and then it's gone. And uh, I always said, well, I can have them fixed when it's when it's over with. So. Yeah, and I mean, I, we see you right with your riding style. I mean, you very you're very good at living in the moment, not just including you know winning titles, but you see somebody walking around that's older. Does it scare you? Oh, no, it, it doesn't scare me. You know, they always tell me, well, boy, you're going to be so crippled. And I always tell them, I'm going to be. I'm already there. I mean, it's I live with it every day. When I get out of bed, I'm, I'm sore. But I don't allow myself. I keep moving. I keep doing stuff. I ride horses. I don't allow myself to get stiff. If I sit around and don't do anything, I hurt pretty bad every day. So I keep going. I keep working. You can, you can ask Samantha. I don't sit still very long. And uh, I think that's what keeps me limber and moving as good as I do is because I don't stop. You know, I'm still riding horses every day. And with his shoulder, I couldn't really saddle a horse. I couldn't do a whole lot. And boy, I about went crazy for a while. And she was gone one day, so I went out there and decided I was going to ride. And it took a while to get that saddle on that horse because my arm would only go so high to saddling. But once I got it up there, I rode around. So after I figured out I could saddle him, I was back to riding horses dang near every day. Let's talk about this latest shoulder injury. I mean. Most of us have seen the video. I mean, you've talked about it. Rank this shoulder injury, because I know you've also told us the stories about what Tandy Freeman thought about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, my, it's probably the worst injury I've had to be out. You know, uh, I'm right-handed. I do everything except ride bulls right-handed. You know, I ride bulls left-handed. But, you know, when I got home, that's what I told my wife. I said, I can't do anything. You know, I, I, I catch cows. I got working dogs and stuff like that. I said, you know, everything I've set up for me to kind of fall back on if I ever get hurt, I said, I still can't do it. You know, I, I trim cows. I got a trimming chute. I'm right-handed. I couldn't hold the grinder. So, you know, it was just, I had to sit there. I couldn't do a whole lot, and it drove me insane. So I think that's half of why I've got it moving as good as I have because I kind of started doing stuff a little earlier than I was supposed to, but I couldn't take it any longer. I, I mean, as you're describing that, I, I can sense the frustration, right, coming across the table. How frustrating has it been for you to have to sit out of this world title race this year? Oh, that's, you know, it, it's irritating. I know I'm getting a little long in the tooth throughout Bulls, and I was sitting pretty good before I got hurt, so, you know, to, to sit there and have to watch myself just keep falling in the standings, it just pissed me off, so. You know, and I, I told my wife, I said, before I told anybody else, I said, if I can get it moving halfway, I'm going to the finals. I said, I can't just sit there and watch it. I said, I've made 11 of them in a row, and I'm not about to quit now. So you had Dr. Tandy Freeman and his medical staff tell you to, to wait out. Um, I'm guessing you've had, you know, whether it's second opinions or other people smarter than you and I tell you it's not too brilliant to be coming back for world finals. Are, do you just think you're smarter than everybody else? No, I'm definitely not smarter than everybody else. Uh, probably, you know, pride gets in the way of my, 
my health issues a lot of times. You know, uh, there's been lots of times me and Tandy had disagreements on whether I should get on a bull or not or attempt to ride one. But, you know, I feel like, and I talked to, you know, Rich, the sports medicine, and uh, he said the only thing I'd really have to worry about is hitting the ground. And then he kind of took it back. He said, well, it might be a good thing if you land on it. I said, why? He said, it'd tear all that scar tissue all at once. I said, let's try not to do that. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, I know there's a risk at it, but I could sit at home for six months and come back and bull step on it the right way and in my career. I mean, I could rip it all again right then. So, you know, I figured if I could get it to where I could move it good enough and build up enough muscle to raise it up a little ways, then I was going to come. I mean, it, get into that a little bit more, though, JB, other than you mentioned the pride pushing you to get through rehab and that thing. Um, was it something that either you and Rich reached in terms of your rehab where you knew you could come back? What was that moment for you? Well, I, I'll tell you what, I was I'd watching the bull ridings and stuff, and I was kind of getting irritated. So Samantha, she was outside doing something. She come in, she couldn't find me. She finally came out there in the shop, and I was on my drop barrel. I was riding that thing just to see if I could get my arm halfway where I needed to be. And at that time, I couldn't. But that's when I decided, let's push it harder, you know. and. So I told the physical therapist at home, you know, I said, look, I'm planning on going back in November. I said, you better get to cranking on this thing. I said, don't look at my face. You just put it where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And which he did a good job, but in the same sense, I think he was scared because of what Tandy was sending him, the prescription on how slow to work it. Mm -hmm. And we, we skipped quite a few steps. <laughs> and, but that's why I went to Rich the last couple of weeks before we came here, because Rich asked him, he said, you know, if I get to cranking on it, can I tear it up? And he said, there's no way you're going to tear what I fixed up. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wish he wouldn't have told him that. But, you know, he stretched it out. We got a pretty good bit of movement in it and strength in it. Like, first time I ever seen the inside of a weight room. And mm -hmm. I didn't like it. So we'll try. <laughs> I'm gonna, once I get this thing back to 95%, I'll never step foot back in a weight room another day of my life. Have you thought about next season? yet since that was originally when you were supposed to come back? I, that's what they asked me. They said, well, since you're coming to the finals, you're going to go to the Global Cup? I said, no. I said, I'm going to Vegas. I'm getting on six bulls. I'm going back home till January. So mm -hmm. if, if this goes pretty good, you know, and I, I well, pretty much if I keep my ass out from underneath them and everything goes well, then you'll see me at the first event come January. I won't wait till the end of January, but I'll keep working on it, keep going and getting it stretched out and try to keep building the muscles up. In your head, have you thought about how you can protect that shoulder at all? No, I really don't. The, you know, the only part I'm really going to have to protect is when I get off. And in that video, I mean, I stuck it out there and landed on it. It stung a little bit right at first, but then it was fine after that. I, you know, I got up and it didn't hurt at all. So mm -hmm. I said, shoot, I'll be all right. So now there's a spoiler in the mix. Sage Kimsey wins the Velocity Tour Finals. Now gets an automatic bid into the world finals. What do you think about that whole process? Oh, you, you can't take anything away from Sage. You know, he, they gave him the invite. He come, he took advantage of it. Now he gets to ride at the PBR finals. Do I agree with it? Not so much. You know, I, 11, I've made the finals 11 years. This will be my 12th year. I've never got invited to anything. And uh, I don't believe in the near future they're ever going to invite me to the NFR <laughs> or give me a chance to even ride at the NFR. So, you know, I'm, the way I look at it is, if, if he wants to be the best, he'd be over here riding bulls. And eventually, yeah, I believe he will come over and just ride in the PBR, but, you know, I, I, that's, when they invited him last year, that's what I told him. I said, look, I said, give him his card. You know, if he wants to be here, he rides good enough, he will be here. But they're just giving him a, a free ride right on into there. So it's up to them. I keep my mouth shut most of the time and sit back and just let them do whatever they want to do. I've got a job doing that's riding my bull, so. Well, and to that point, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm prodding you a little bit and, and for due reason, but I mean, do you feel like a guy like Sage, I mean, if he rides the way that he does, I mean, should be given these opportunities? Yeah, I mean, it just depends. That, that's, that's above my pay grade, I guess. You know, I, I'm here to ride bulls, but I've told them, you know, I didn't agree with giving invites and things like that because, you know, when I when I came around when I was 18, there wasn't no going to rodeos and then coming to the PBR. It was from the time I was 18 years old, it was strictly PBR. I never had any invites anywhere. Nobody ever gave me a free ride into a built Ford Tough. You know, I worked my way up here and I kept my ass in the top 35. So, you know, that, that's the way I feel about it. If you if he wants to be here, 
I mean, buy his card and give it to him. Touch on that a little bit more, though, the, the pride that I know that you have spending your whole career here in, in the PBR. Because at the end of the day, whether people want to downplay it or not, it does seem like there is still this rivalry between the PRCA and the PBR. Oh, there he is. You know, it, it's, it's just like Americans and Brazilians, you know. It, it's the same kind of difference. Everybody's friends, everybody gets along. But there's fans out there that like Americans. There's fans out there that like Brazilians, and it and it pins each other against the, uh, you know, against them. But you know, it's the same thing: PRCA Cowboys versus PBR guys, and it's always been that way. It's not necessarily with the bull riders. You know, you every bull rider's got a job to do and ride your bull. But you know, it, it makes for good watching, I guess, all the fans and everything. So. That's how it is, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like if you're gonna be the best bull rider in the world, you come over here and try it for a whole year and see how it works out for you. You mentioned that you've never gotten an invite to go to NFR. If you got one, would you go? Hell yeah, I'd go. <laughs> if they invited me, I'd go for sure. You know, I, It's a lot of money. Oh, it's a lot of money, it's 10 days, and you know, I always wanted to make the NFR one time, but you know, I was more focused on PBR and going to those. One year I did go to some rodeos and you know, I always just wanted to make it one time, but I'm getting a little getting a little old to be going to both all year long. So <clears throat> if they invited me, I'd go for sure, though. I'm trying not to keep track, but you've mentioned that you're getting old a few times <laughs> during this conversation. So that leads me to my final question. Let's talk career, what, what you still think you have to do to be considered the best. Is it a number of world titles? Well, to, to me, the reason I keep going is it's my own pride, you know, it's my own set goals. It's not to do with anybody else or be considered the best. It's got to do with what's inside me. And I set a goal a long time ago. I wanted to be a four-time world champion, and then I'd hang it up, you know. Once I achieve that, I'm gone. Well, we're gone. Good interview. Appreciate it. <laughs>